Hey there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now we've got the Galaxy S23 coming out very soon. There are lots of rumours about availability, pricing, the CPU, the memory, the cameras. There's so much to cover. And in today's video, I want to look at what I hope is true, what I hope it will be, and what I hope is definitely not true. Okay, so if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so we do know that the Galaxy S23 is coming out on the 1st of February. Samsung has confirmed that, but we don't yet know about the availability. Now, last time round, uh, the S22 was announced on February the 9th, I think, and the availability was February the 25th, so that's about 16 days. So if they follow, Samsung follows the same pattern, then if we've got an announcement on the 1st of February, then we should be seeing the availability, what, on the 16th, 17th of February? The 17th will be a Friday. That would be maybe a good day for them to do it. So we're looking at announcement, 1st of February, availability in the middle of February. But what will we be actually getting uh, in the middle of February? Well, of course, this is the Galaxy S range. So we've had the Samsung Galaxy S21. We have the Samsung Galaxy S22. This is now the Samsung Galaxy S23. So we've seen the progression of this line. So I'm not expecting any radical changes. Suddenly, you know, it's going to be a foldable or something like that. That's already a different device from Samsung. So we're continuing here. And that probably means we're going to get an S23, an S23 Plus, an S23 Ultra. That's absolutely fine. Different specs, greater specs across different prices and so on. And I think we're going to see the same thing again now. What I think we're going to see the same across all of them is the same processor. And that's going to be the Snapdragon uh, 8 Gen 2. I think that's pretty much a certainty. Now, what's interesting, though, is there was rumors that Samsung were making their own uh, you know, Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 and, uh, at their own foundries. And that's just a load of nonsense. I really hope it's a load of nonsense. I'm pretty sure it's a load of nonsense because the TSMC process that Qualcomm have chosen is superior to the one that Samsung have. And if they built one on the Samsung process, then it would just it would just cripple the chip from out of the gate. However, the rumor did exist. So why would that rumor exist? Well, maybe Samsung have got a kind of a deal with Qualcomm for supply. Maybe there's a you know a branded version. Maybe it runs at a higher clock speed. Something to differentiate it from all the other Snapdragon 8 processors out there, because of course Samsung is a huge customer of Qualcomm. And maybe there was a deal there so that they didn't produce an Exynos chip this year. They just went with Qualcomm or Qualcomm and sweetened the deal somehow. We'll have to wait and see how that turns out. But certainly it's going to be a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 made at TSMC. It's a Qualcomm chip, but maybe something different to make it a Samsung uh, sweet of their higher clock speed or whatever. Now, related to the processor, there was a rumor I read on Twitter back in January that there's going to be improved cooling on the S23 range. And that, of course, improves the thermal dissipation. So the heat gets out quicker, which means you're not getting as much thermal throttling. What does that mean? When you push the processor hard, let's say playing a 3D game, maybe doing something like rendering a video, then it can produce more heat. And when it produces more heat, the processor has to slow down because it can't have that heat not being dissipated. And so it has to slow down until the heat disappears. Now when you've got better therm uh, better cooling then you get better thermals which means that you can actually run the processor at a higher clock speed, higher performance for a longer amount of time. And a lot of the things we've done over on Android Authority is to test how long uh, it takes before the performance of the phone starts to dip. Of course the peak performance that first time you run it Geekbench and Tutu, whatever you're running the first time round when it's nice and cool is very different to what happens after you run it for 30 minutes when the processor is struggling to get rid of that heat. And so improved cooling, improved thermals definitely gets a thumbs up from me. That's something we definitely need. And also related to performance, of course, is the RAM. Now, the rumor is it will have LPDDR5X RAM, which does give you double digit improvements uh, in performance and in throughput. So that's, of course, going to overall help everything that you see on the smartphone. So if they've moved to 5X, which is highly likely, then again, a thumbs up from me. That's a really good thing that I'd like to see. Now, here's an interesting one. Will it use UFS 4.0? Now, of course, Samsung itself announced UFS 4.0 back in May of 2022. Will they upgrade the S23 range to UFS 4.0? I really hope they do. Again, that helps IO performance when you're loading apps from the from the uh, internal storage. It helps when you're you know doing multiple burst modes on the photos. You want to write that quickly to storage, recording, lots 
shorts of video, 8K video, record, you know, write it quicker. All those things are important. And it would be, again, if that rumor is true, then that would get a thumbs up from me. Now, there was a rumor that there's going to be higher prices. Now, that's definitely a rumor I hope is not true. Uh, of course, prices are going up all over the world with energy prices. There's a, there's a war on, you know, we're in a post-COVID time. I mean, here where I live, I've seen prices go up uh, for some things literally double. So I understand that. But I hope that uh, Samsung are not going to double the prices. That would just be uh, ridiculous. Even, uh, you know, any price increase would be bad for us as consumers. So let's just hope it stays the same. I think last year, what was that, $7.99 was the, was the starting point for the Galaxy S22. So let's hope it's the same this year for the S23. In terms of software, of course, we're looking at Android 13 with Samsung's uh, skin on top. So that's one UI. And the room is there's be one UI 5.1, a new iteration specifically for the uh, S23. 23, absolutely fine by me. Uh, I've never had a problem with One UI. Some people do, some people don't. I've never had a problem. So yep, One UI and Android 13, great by me. Now, one of the things that Samsung have been teasing with their Samsung Reserve program, by the way, if you do want $50 off of the uh, Galaxy S23, then go over to the Samsung Reserve site. There's a link in the description below. You can register your interest and you're guaranteed a $50 off. Now, one of the things they've been promoting there was that this thing, this made for moonlight and the moon's got three O's and it's showing there are three uh, camera sensors. So what are we expecting? Well, three camera sensors because that's what uh, Samsung are showing. Absolutely great. Rumors that one of them is gonna be a 50 megapixel sensor. Absolutely great. I think that would be good. And then of course, we're expecting things like, you know, dual pixel AF, we're looking at optical image stabilization and all the things that we've also seen in the S22. Now it is thought that the S23 Ultra will have a four camera setup and that the four center will be 200 uh, megapixels. So that really would be <laughs> quite a mind-blowing thing. So 200 megapixels, uh, if you want to get the top line one, it'll be interesting to see the comparisons between, let's you know, say, the S23 Plus and the S23 Ultra, 50 megapixels versus 200 megapixels. I'm sure all those tests are coming out. Now, I am a camera buff. I do like taking photos. I like taking them with a, you know, with a mirrorless or a DLSR as it was in the time. Uh, but I do find myself, you know, as they say, the best cameras, the one that you've got with it. I do find myself taking lots of photos with my camera, with my smartphone. So actually that would be good if we had that 200 megapixels and it worked and it, and it was actually good. Of course, there's also going to be some optical zooms in between those different different lenses, you know, and Samsung have been pretty good at their zooms, both digital and optical over the last few years. So it'd be interesting to see what they do there. So all those rumors, if they're true, they definitely get a thumbs up from me. Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter and other social media platforms. All the handles are here on the screen. And also I have a monthly newsletter. If you want to know what I'm doing here on Gary Explains, what I'm also doing over on Android Authority, then sign up to my monthly newsletter and you'll get all of that information. Go over to GaryExplains.com, type in mail address, no spam, but you will get that newsletter. And of course, one thing we all want to see is better battery life. So we should have better battery life because we've got a more efficient processor. It's built on a good, the four nanometer process node from TSMC. But, you know, bigger batteries are also a thing. You know, you don't have to just keep shrinking everything down. You just put a bigger battery in. And these devices nowadays, what, we've got six inch screens. I mean, just put a bigger battery in there. And the rumors are there are bigger batteries, bigger batteries in all of the models across the range. So I really hope that's true. Even an extra 200 milliamp hours, 300 milliamp hours can be really useful. So I really hope that they've got bigger batteries. That's the rumor. So again, if that's true, yes, well done, Samsung. Now, a couple of rumors that I don't like that get the thumbs down from me. And in one sense, they're inevitable, but this is just, you know, how things go. But I really wish they weren't true. One, no charges in the box. No chargers. So if you know if you've just switched from Apple to Samsung, or you've just switched from an older phone that you had three years ago to a new Samsung Galaxy Twenty, you're not going to be able to charge it at the fastest rate that you that you could do because they don't give you a charger that supports the 45 watt, you know, uh, fast charging whatever it is they've put in there. You have to charge it at your just two amps and five volts kind of thing, ten watts maybe. You know, come on, 
just put a charger in the box. When I buy a phone, I like the charger that goes with it, with the cable that goes with it. I know I get the fastest charging time and I get the optimal charging time. That's what I want. So come on, people. I mean, it's not only Samsung. This is everybody. Put the chargers back in the boxes, please. And then, of course, inevitable, no headphone jack, no micro SD card slot. We mourned the loss of those years ago. I wish they would bring them back. Uh, you know... People like me and others have been moaning about it, but they don't listen. But there you go. So it's the trend of the day. So if you're expecting a headphone jack, you're going to have to get a different device, maybe a mid-range device, because they still seem to come with headphone jacks nowadays. If you want a flagship Galaxy, then just make, just know, just make a note that you're not going to get a headphone jack or an SD card slot. And one thing that's also probably certain is that the Ultra version of the S23 will include an S Pen. So if you remember, the S21 Ultra could work with an S Pen, but you didn't get one in the box. It couldn't be, you know, incorporated in. The S22 Ultra did have an S Pen built in, and we're hoping that's going to continue now with the S23. Now, personally, I was a real Note fan. I had two, the Note 5 and the Note 8. My wife had a Note 9. I mean, we love the, the Note series, and then suddenly it just disappeared. Now, if the uh, S23 Ultra had, comes with a pen, kind of really replacing that Note, then that's great by me. Okay, that's it. That's kind of the rumours that I've kind of heard about and addressing some of those things. Are there any other rumours that you've heard that I haven't mentioned? Do, do tell me in the comments below and let's talk about whether that's actually going to be true or not. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And uh, I suppose that's it. I'll see you in the next one.